morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning at home. That should be Barbara and Valerie. No Brian this morning, though. Because <laughs> he's in the person. All right, let's see what we've got. Let everybody know what they need. So everybody just let me know there in the comments how your bodies are doing. Julie, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. I love the picture of your kitty on the yoga mat. It made my heart happy. They do some great yoga. All right. No. With the side of no. So today, so Julie at home, I don't know what you have, but a block, anything will work. We're going to be doing a pose called Half Moon, and it looks like this, and it's fun. <laughs> you guys know all about fun. So this is what Half Moon looks like. You'll need a strap too, by the way. Okay, here. And so we'll need, they're up on the top of the cart. Green or black are going to be the um, 10 foot ones. And then you're going to need a strap. Now, honestly, because we're not doing toy soldier where you have to wrap it all around your body, you only need something that will make it this long. Good morning. You need a block and a strap today. Okay. How's your body? Good. Good. So you'll need a strap that's long enough for you to do this. So that could be a belt at home and like a belt. We automatically think about pants belt, but like the belt to your robe is going to be longer or if you have an old martial arts belt, if you had kids at home that did that. Or if you did that, I did that. So we're all settled. We're gonna do balance today, your lucky day. Diane's like, I'm hustling, I'm hustling. <laughs> all right, we're gonna let the head come forward to the back of the neck stretch. And we let the head come up, right here, right shoulder. Left ear, left shoulder. And back up. So we lift the pelvic floor, pull navel in, we push the shoulders back. Really tall spine. We breathe. We just notice our breath. We have those 20,000 breaths we get each day. Some people more, some people less. But this next hour, we want to make sure that we breathe with intention. We feel it. We feel the coolness at the nostrils as it comes in. We feel the coolness down the throat to about the hollow of the throat before it becomes body temperature. We feel the rib cage expand. And this breath is that indicator of how hard you're working or if you're holding your breath. If you're holding the breath, chances are it's a harder posture for you, you've gone too far, or you're overthinking the pose. So you'll release the breath, back off the pose, and let your breath guide you. With your intention set, you've checked in with the body, maybe emotionally or mentally, because I checked in with your physical body. 
See where your energy is. And we smile. We got faces. We have muscles in those faces. We open the eyes, lace the fingers together, pressing out, lifting up. Aww. Good morning, Barbara. I am your sunshine. Tall spine and roll to the right. Tall spine. One. Two, three, four, five. Left shoulder comes down, right hand comes up. One, two, three, four, five. Contract that right side to come up. And back to the center, hands come out and up. And twist to the left, tall spine. One, two, three, four, five. Right shoulder comes down, left hand comes up. One, two, three, four, five. Slowly we come back up. And back to the center and forward. So stretch it out. And you feel that work all the way down through the glutes, through the back body. And you're just going to fold forward as much as you can. And whichever leg is folded in front or on top, you probably feel that hip a little more. And as we come up, we're going to change the cross of those legs and smile. Everybody in here is like... <laughs> It's Wednesday morning, you're with me, smile. Right arm comes down, left arm reaches. Tall spine. And one, two, three, four, five. We let the hand come up. From here, we bend at the elbow, twist it through. One, two, three, four, five. Unwind and lengthen. And up. Left arm comes down. Right arm reaches. One, two, three, four, five. Hand comes up. Bend at the elbow. Twist it through. One, two, three, four, five. Unwind and lengthen. Slowly we come back up, hands come behind, roll those shoulders back, lift the chest up, open through heart, collarbones, throat, soften face, don't push the chin out. Forward folding, we allow those hands to come up. Now the hands should ideally come away from your waist. That may not happen for some folks depending on how you're built. Three, Four, five, and hands come down, and back so the hands come together. So how we're built doesn't mean too much because we can remodel, but that's just the body you brought today. And gently release, shoulders come up, and down, one more time, up, and down, bottoms of the feet touch. Grab the feet, folding at hip crease, leaning forward. One, two, three, four, five. As we come up, knees come up, cross and roll back body. So we stretch through the shoulders. One, two, three, four, Five, bring those knees up. <gasps> Hello, Celeste. I am so excited you are here. Watch me later, but I'm sending you big hugs, so you'll get them either now or later. And bring those knees in. Reach down, grab right foot, and extend it up. One. So this, it doesn't matter if this leg is straight. Now, we're trying to get it straight so we can work on that hamstring, but I don't want this in the back. So I'd rather this be bent and this be tall. You can do both. 
That's a bonus, but not necessary. Two, three, four, five. Foot comes down and up. Did you grab a strap, Frank? Yes, I got one. Okay. I'm ready. Yay, you're prepared. Yep. Three, four. How's your mom? Very good. Good. And five. And the foot comes down. We're going to drop those knees over to the left. Sitting up tall, right hip goes down. One, two, three. Push down on the hip. Four, five. Knees come up and over. One, two, three, four, five. Bring those knees up. Extend those legs out. Lengthen forward. Now, feet direction, not a destination. So some of us make that journey. Some of us get there. Doesn't matter. It's that forward folding, that engagement in the back of the leg, feeling like the hips are going in one direction, the heels are going in an opposite direction. That extension expansion happens subtly in the back of the knee. So we want to breathe through that, hollowing out belly, lifting pelvic floor, elongate through spine. Two, Three, four, five. As we come up, our right leg comes over left. Now, this right leg keeps that left one still. So as we begin to fold, we feel that left hamstring say, good morning. At least that's what mine's yeah. saying. <laughs> Is that what yours is saying? And we can grab that right knee and we can pull ourselves in or we can grab foot and make contact, maybe. And lengthen. One, two, three, four, five. As we come back up, foot comes next to the knee and we'll rotate to the right, tall spine. One, two, three, four, Five, back to the center, grab the foot, rock it up. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna let that foot come to the inside of the thigh. We're gonna lean forward. So as we lean forward towards that left leg, we're focused there, so that's what we feel. But we want to press down and back with right hip. So we're gonna press it down. You can even put your right palm and try to smooth that tissue down and back. Lengthening out. One, two, three, four, five. As we come up, right hand comes behind, press down to come up and lengthen through side body. Nice extension through left hand. Where's your breath? Open that left side. So that lung is really big, the rib cage is really open. We open through front of left hip, we gain strength in right palm. As we allow glutes to come back down, right foot comes in, and we're gonna catch it in the hip crease. All of this helps us ground. We do it every practice, but it, they have something that's the same. So we have that comfort of routine, and then we change it so we get a little spicy extra later. How's your knee holding up? Good breathing, I can tell. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. As we release, we extend. Bounce, 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 bounce. Left leg comes over. Tall spine. Are we tall? Connie, are you tall? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. As we come up, foot comes next to the knee, rotate to the left, tall spine. One, two, three, four, five. Back to the center, grab that foot, rock it up. Nice release in the hip. 
you can see all your smiling faces. And gently release, put that foot in. And from here, we're gonna fold forward. So as we fold forward, we can put that left hand on this hip, and you're trying to encourage it backing down. So as I fold forward, I'm gonna put my hand on my left hip, trying to encourage it to go back and down. And maybe that's just, just that tactile feeling of the warmth of the hand will allow you to connect to the hip. Maybe until you touch the hip, you really had no idea you could even feel it or what that movement would be like. Three. Four, five, as we come up, left hand comes down, press down to come up, lengthen to right side of body. One, two, three, four, five. Booty comes right back down. We're gonna take that foot, place it into hip crease. Now once it's in that hip crease, we're gonna let that right one bend, left one comes down, tall spine maybe. Maybe we're doing this, Try not to be in the shoulders. You're smiling, that makes me happy. Maybe you're up out of the shoulder. Maybe the knee is down. Big difference, Diane, right now between the two sides, huge. We'll work through that. Is it bothering you when you're running? Are you running around the lake? Uh, yeah. Are you running the same direction all the time? Don't. The lake has a pitch, like Hollingsworth does. So every time, try to run it the other way. I, just from experience. So clockwise, counterclockwise, and that'll help your hip a little bit. And back up, and then gently release. That's enough. Forward fold. Yeah, yeah, so we have a little bit of work on the floor, but then we get to it. Yeah, it's fun. I took Bird of Paradise out, <laughs> so it will be fun. And we're going to bring those knees in, and a little rock maybe to feel the sacrum. Arms are out to the side. Let's drop those knees over to the left. Nice rotation. We keep right shoulder on the floor. Long extension through side body. So here's where we start to discuss what we do in our practice. So we're going to be working on balancing. When we're done here, we're going to roll up and we're going to work on our feet in a minute. But this side work here, this is that work on the synergistic muscles. So we have our front bodies and our back bodies. They do our major movements. They help us lift our leg and push our legs. And we bend at the hips to pick up something. But it's the side body that helps us twist. It's the side body that helps us balance. And we want to really start to get in touch with those muscles. We're going to extend that right foot out into the left hand, feeling the outside of the right hip. You're probably going to feel it right at that waistline through the outside of the hip. Sometimes you can feel it as far up as mid rib cage. Three, four, five, release that foot, bring those knees to the center and then over to the right. Nice rotation. Maybe you can extend that left foot out and put it in right hand. One, two, three, four, five. Gently release and bring those knees back to the center. Feet come up, we can grab the heels. One, two, three, four, Five, gently release, pull those knees in. So again, working side body for us, we're gonna extend those feet up. Feet are flat, arms are out to the side again, but the palms are down. The palms being down is gonna give us a little bit more control of moving the legs from side to side. So we allow those legs to come over to the left, keeping the feet flat. So right hip comes up off the floor, left glute is still on the floor. Working through the oblique, are you breathing? Are you smiling? Remember the intention you said at the beginning of the practice? Stay present by checking in with the bodies, physically, emotionally, mentally, energetically, and bring those knees back in, and then over to the right. So those legs again, 45 degree angle if you can, feeling weight down into right glute, left glute is off the floor, left shoulder is touching floor, 
You're breathing and smiling. Three, four, five, and back to the center. Pull those knees in, feeling that work. Now we're gonna cross to the ankles. We're rolling up to our bum. We're not going all the way to hands and knees. So we're gonna roll up to the butt, and I'm gonna face you this way. And then we're gonna cross. Good morning, Brandy. So we're not coming into a full steer. We're only crossing enough that we have access to the foot. So we're getting ready to stand and do our balances. We want to try to get into the ankle and foot. So we have support here. We're gonna grab, doesn't matter which foot you have on top, and we're gonna do rotation. Again, doesn't matter which direction because we're gonna change that in a moment. So you just want it stacked enough that you have space to do this rolling. And then change the direction for me. And you might get a clicking in one direction. If it does not hurt you, that's fine. If it's uncomfortable, then don't. We're gonna take those toes and we're gonna pull the foot forward towards the shin. So the more that you pull the ball of the foot and the toes, the heel is going to point out. You're gonna get this really nice stretch here through the Achilles. By nice, I mean effective. I will use, I will do better with my adjectives, sorry. And then we're going to allow those toes to come down. We're going to pull them and feel the front of the shin stretch. Two, three, four, five, and gently release and then switch. So we're going to do rotations with this one. So again, doesn't matter which rotation, because we'll change it out in a minute. And change direction. And then from here, we're gonna pull the ball of the foot and the toes towards shin. One, two, three, four, Five, gently release. We're gonna start pulling those toes down. Open through shin. One, two, three, four, five, and gently release. Now, from there, we're gonna come right to hands and knees. We're gonna turn the toes under because we're trying to stretch the feet. So we're gonna come into a down, oh no, a child's pose, but it's active. We're going to take those palms and try to press the glutes back towards the heels. So we want a nice straight long body, straight arms, the biceps are by the ears, the belly is down on the thighs, but it's trying to push the booty towards the heels. That's the active nature here. We definitely feel it in those Achilles and through the backs of the feet, maybe into the plantar. We're going to allow those hands to slowly walk us up and see if we can sit on our heels. This might be uncomfortable. Do what you can. The whole purpose is to stretch the feet. Two, three, four, five. Slowly walk it back out. But as we come to that table, soften the feet. Sitting back towards those heels. Hands come down. Again, active, so we're pressing on the mat to try to push the booty towards the heels. Nice long arms, nice long spine. Ears are between those biceps. Feel the work. Slowly we start to walk those hands up so that we can sit on the feet. Again, working through here. You might feel it in your knee, depending on if you're having some issues with the knee. But the whole purpose of this is just to work our feet so we have better balance. We're starting that foundation from the feet up. And from there, we're gonna walk back out to table, turning those toes, coming to down dog. Bend and stretch. Should feel pretty good after having those insteps on the mat. Find your breath, feel the work. Lengthen through spine. From there, we put the knees down, walk the hands back, and come into your best version of squat. Again, to work through feet. 
Achilles, shins, calves, toes, 26 bones in the feet. Three arches. And slowly coming forward, press down to come up. Looking at each, we shake the head no. Bend those knees, we're rolling up. Hands come all the way up. Hands come down. Right ear, right shoulder. Left ear, left shoulder. Back to the center. Smiling. All right, so we feel grounded. Yes. Yes. That's the right answer. I like that. That was a cute little face, right? <laughs> All right. So let's have some fun. I'm going to get this water away from my computer because that's the kind of pause I've got. So we're going to step to the front. We're going to inhale up. Playful flow. <laughs> Exhale forward. Fingertips flat back, forward fold, soft bend the knees, right foot comes back. So we're on the ball of the right foot. So this first series that we go through, this first flow combination, is going to be crescent. So we want to feel the good connection through the mat as we press down to come up, arms come up. Really push through that back heel. This within itself already is a balance because you're on the ball of the foot. We feel the front of that right leg really stretching. We push through the heel, hands come forward and back. Press through that left foot, we come up. Where's your breath? Come forward, hands come back. And back up. One more time, forward. And up. Now, from here we're getting ready to balance. Warrior three, hands come to heart, step to stick. That's already a lot of work on quad. Now from here we're in fold, foot goes back, keeping feet uh, grounded, don't let it turn. Left leg is straight, you'll have that tendency to bend it. And you want to be as flat as you can, three, four, Five, we start to bend that left knee, placing right foot down, and then the hands come to the floor. We're going to step back into plank. From plank, knees, chest, and chin or chaturanga. However, no cobra, up dog, so that we can work through the tops of the feet. One, two, three, four, five. See if you can flip those feet. Bend and stretch. I'm still getting snap, crackles, and pops out. <sighs> right leg travels forward. We're on the ball of left foot so that we can complete the other side. We come up into our crescent posture. Push through that left heel. One, two, three, four, five hands come to heart. Step to step, forward folding. One, two, three, four, five. Bending right knee so that you can sit left foot down, hands come to floor. From there, we're going to step forward. Fingertips flat back, forward folding. Feeling that work. Shaking the head no. Shaking that head yes. And slowly coming back up. And it lost me. Oh my goodness. Very beyond. They changed the um, Facebook format. So it makes it hard for me to check messages while in live mode. It takes you out of live mode. And release. So we just kind of feel connected to the feet. Right ear, right shoulder. 
We feel the temperature of the feet. Maybe we move around to a cool spot. Left ear, left shoulder. We check in with the hamstrings because warrior three is a lot. It's fun though. And head comes back up. We're gonna to come to the front of the mat. This time we're gonna practice warrior two, inhaling up. Exhale, forward folding. Fingertips flat back. Forward fold. Bend the knees. Right foot travels back, grounding that right foot. Now, once we ground that right foot, we're going to cartwheel up into warrior two. Now, remember about this knee. We want the knee over the ankle. We don't want it rolling in. We want it rolling out. You know you're rolling out too far if that right toe starts to peel up off the floor. One, two, three, four, five. Hands slowly come to floor. Come to the ball of right foot, stepping back to plank. From plank, knees, chest, and chin or chaturanga is an option, but please, only up dog today. Maybe a full cobra if you'd like, but up dog would be preferred so that we can really stretch to the fronts of the feet. And turn those toes. Coming into down dog, bend and stretch. Filling in lower back. Remember your breath and your intention. Feeling connected to the mat. We let right leg come forward, grounding back foot. Cartwheel up. Warrior two. Again, right knee's coming out. Foot is underneath right knee. Where's your breath? One, two, three, four, five. Hands slowly come to four. Come to the ball of left foot as we step forward, fingertips flat back, forward folding, shake the head no, shake the head heck yeah, inhale all the way up, hands come down. Open and close those hands, maybe a little wrist circles, and really, so a first balance that is not in the flow is treat. We have four grounding points in the foot. We have two grounding points on either side of the heel, two grounding points on either side of the ball of the foot, which is basically the mound of the big toe and the mound of the small toe. And we're pressing in. We don't really need the toes. We shouldn't be using them to grasp. They're like fringe for the foot. So we're gonna lift the toes and lower them and place all the weight in left foot. Now once we have the weight into that left foot, we're going to take that right foot and see if we can place. Hands come to heart. One. Two. Lifting pelvic floor. There's a small tuck here. Three. Four. Smiling. And five. We allow that foot to come down. Walk it out a little bit. Good morning, Mom. Thanks for joining me. You and Dad don't have anything else to do. <laughs> Watch me do yoga in the morning. <laughs> Thanks. Right foot, heel, ball, toe. You're going to lift those toes, lower the toes. Put all the weight into right foot. And we're going to let that left foot come up in place. Hands come to the heart. Try to let the knee come out without rotating the hip. One, two, three, four, five. Slowly walk it up. Maybe you want to stretch the back of your foot. You can do this. You can take the ball and roll it. Whichever gives you comfort. Definitely awareness is what we're looking in. There we go. We're going to come to the front of the mat. Let's do our next fun thing. Inhale up. Exhale, forward folding. Fingertips flat back. Forward folding. Looking at those knees, we shake the head no. We shake our head heck yeah, we're awesome. Bend the knees, let that right foot come back. We're going to ground that right foot. We cartwheel up into warrior two. We're going to work on side angle. So left elbow comes down to left knee. Right arm travels over the body, making the angle there. 
So the angle is from the back of that right hand down the right side of the body to the outside edge of right foot, which we want to ground that outside edge of the foot. Nice long stretch here. You can look up towards the ceiling or lift the chin and look towards right palm. Two, three, four, five. We allow that right elbow to come around and place on the left knee. We put the palms together, rotating. Use the pressure in the left hand to push down in right hand to rotate the body looking at left elbow and one, two, three, four, five. As we release, hands come to floor, come to ball of right foot, stepping back to plank. From plank, you have options, knees, chest and chin or chaturanga. From here, up dog please. Open through the fronts of the feet, open the chest, straight arms, use your fingertips to hold it, flip those toes, come into down dog, bending and stretching. Lengthening through the spine, broadening the back. One, two, three, four, five. As we bend those knees a little, we let right leg travel forward, grounding back foot. Cartwheel up into warrior two. Now from here, right elbow comes to right knee, left arm reaches, hips forward, shoulders back. One, two, three, four, five. Revolve, left elbow comes to right knee, palms come together. One, two, three, four, Five, hands come down, come to the ball of that left foot, coming forward, fingertips flat back, forward folding, inhale all the way up, hands touch as we come down, check in with the body, feel the temperature and texture on your feet, maybe you move the wrists, maybe you move the neck, not the fidget, but to reconnect. We grab the strap, yay strap. So we have this practice, or this posture, we do hand to big toe pose. So ideally when you do the posture, it's here. But depending on your hamstring flexibility, grabbing that foot or leg length, it's not happening. So we use the strap instead. So we're gonna take that strap, put it under the bottom of right foot, which means we're gonna balance on the left one. So let's get that left foot settled. Heel, ball, toes. Lift toes, lower toes, all weight on left foot. We're going to extend that right leg forward. So maybe because of where you grab this strap, this is all the higher that your leg goes. If you want it higher, you grab the strap and slide. Hand goes on hip. There's a tuck here. Try not to lean back holding this up. One, two, three. Four, five, allow the leg to rotate out to the side. Try to activate this hip and push back against it. Don't shift your hip out. Two, up tall, three, four, five. Here's the really fun part. We're gonna come back to the center. We have this tuck. We have this leg out, but what we're gonna do is drop. One, two, three, four, Five, and down, and our quad says, hello. <laughs> and we're gonna switch legs. Is that what it's saying? Ur, ur, ur. It's not what it's saying, right? <laughs> it's like, what did they do to you? <laughs> and we're just balancing out those hamstrings in the back to keep them from crying all the time. Right foot, heel, ball, and toes. We lift those toes, lower the toes, all the weight is in right foot, okay? We grab the strap and lift, and you're like, maybe I can come a little higher than that. So you grab one in, slide. There's a tuck here. We don't lean back to come into this posture. One, two, there's a lot of bouncing going on. Three, four, five, we let that foot come out to the side, the hand still on hip. One, two, three, Four, five.
five, we're gonna bring that foot back forward. Now when it comes forward, we have that tuck, we find that grasp in that psoas, and we let go of the strap. One, two, three, four, five, and drop it down. Yay, us. We're gonna take that strap, put it out of the way, come to the front, we have more fun in this. Randy, oh wow, my balance is off. Oh, it gets better. We just practiced, and it gets better. Yay, I'm glad you're practicing. Inhaling up, and exhale, floor folding. Fingertips flat back, we're lengthening through the spine. And forward fold, soften those knees. We're gonna send that right foot back. We're gonna ground that right foot. We're gonna cartwheel back up into warrior two. From warrior two, we're gonna take that back hand, that right one, and left hand on knee, and right hand on floor. We're going to put pressure into left hand to rotate those shoulders. Once we rotate the shoulders, we're gonna see if we can straighten left leg. Coming into a modified revolve triangle, left arm lifts. Definitely feel that in left hip, in the hamstrings, are you breathing? This is a modified posture. If it was the full posture, the right hand would be on the other side of left leg. Three, four, five. We allow the left hand to come down. You may need to bend your knee to touch the floor. Come to the ball of right foot. We step back into plank. From plank, knees, chest and chin or chaturanga. Up dog, please, on the tops of those feet. Elongating through the spine, way up out of the shoulders. Flip those toes, down dog. Bending and stretching. Right leg travels forward, grounding the back foot. We cartwheel up into warrior two. Left hand to floor, right hand to knee. Press on that right knee to rotate those shoulders. See if you can straighten right leg and let right arm come up. Modified revolt triangle. Two, three, four, but we allow top hand to come down, bending right knee, come to ball of left foot, stepping forward, fingertips flat back, forward folding, <sighs> inhale all the way up, hands come down, and release. Yay! Good breathing. All right, so we're going to get a strap again. We're going to work on dancer pose. So dancer pose, typically when we practice here, we are doing this. So we're working one arm at a time. We're still getting that quad stretch, but I want us to get into the shoulder. Now the full expression of dancer pose is both arms should be here and you should be grabbing your foot. Huh. Only one time have I ever achieved that posture. It was a really good day, <laughs> but not since then. So to do that, to practice, and that typically has nothing to do with the shoulder. You would think that it is. It's the opening of this hip flexor that's the issue, right? So there's a little bit of a trick here. Let me show you before you try. I'm going to show you from the side. We're going to do dancer, but we need the strap to be on the top of the foot, not the bottom of the foot. How does it get there? There's this little turn that we do. You have to keep pressure on it for it to work, right? So let's see if you guys can do that. Yeah, yeah, good job. So once we pull it back, we're going to see if we can let that second arm come up, maybe walk it down some, elbows in towards head, folding forward some. One, two, three, four, five. Release it up, put the foot down. Right, it's a way to play. Left foot, I'll turn this way. So I grab about thigh, and you may be coordinated on one side and not the other, and that's fair. Right foot, heel ball toe. We're going to take that and rotate. And maybe you can grab with the second hand. Walk those hands down, elbows in, forward folding. 
One, two, three, four, five. Release it up. Place the foot down. Yay! All right, so our next time through, we are going to, we won't need the strap anymore, so you can put it out of the way. I have to move the computer a little bit, though. Um, our next time through, we're going to work on half moon. So we need to make sure that the block goes to the front of the mat. So that you can grab a hold of it. Yep. Or your chair, or whatever you're going to use for your half moon. It has very long legs and very tight hamstrings. <laughs> so whatever gets the job done. All right, so you're gonna inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Fingertips flat back. Forward folding again, bend those knees. We're gonna send that right foot back, grounding that right foot. We cartwheel up into warrior two. Once we're here, straight in front leg. We're going to lengthen forward and tip. Left hand comes to shin, right hand comes up. Maybe you even slide down closer to your ankle. Only if you have good form. If you feel like you lose your form, the booty starts sticking out, your chest starts coming forward, then you're practicing with your ego. It doesn't matter whether you touch the floor. It's if you can feel the pose or not. Find that breath. Three, four, five. How do we do this next posture? Right hand comes to hip. Turn your head, look at your left foot. Bend your knee so that you can reach forward and grab the block, pull it back by your left foot. Put your weight on that block. Step your right foot, your back one in. Slide that block forward about 18 inches. Put all your weight into left foot as you begin to straighten left leg, we lift right leg. Try to stack the shoulders. You guys look good. You guys at home, I know you're doing a great job. Everybody in here is doing their best. Three, four, lift that back leg a little bit for me. Yes, and five. We're gonna bend that left knee sitting right foot down, hand comes down. Step back into plank. From plank, knees, chest and chin or chaturanga, up dog please. Opening through the tops of the feet. Really pull the shoulders away from the ears, flip those toes, coming into down dog, bend and stretch it. Lengthen through spine. Right leg travels forward, grounding that back foot. We use warrior two to make that transition to standing. We straighten right leg, right hand comes down, left hand comes up. Find your best movement. So maybe the hips can come forward, shoulders or back. Maybe you can come further. Maybe you grab a toe or floor. You practice with what your body says yes to today. Three, four, five. Let's work on that half moon. Left hand comes to hip. Look down at floor. Bend right knee. Grab your block. Back foot comes in. Slide that block forward, step and come up into half moon. So we have to straighten this bottom leg, straighten that left leg, hand is up. Stack those shoulders if you can. Flat foot. You're still lifting pelvic floor and pulling the navel in. Try not to drop the ear towards the floor. We want to keep the head neutral. Four, five. We allow top hand to come down as we bend right knee. We come back into a lunge. Stepping forward, fingertips flat back. Forward folding, shake the head no. Shake the head, heck yes, this was fun. And inhale all the way up. And now. Releasing it out. So we have one more flow where we're going to work on, I forget. Warrior one, and then we're going to do eagle posture. So here we come to the front of the mat. And I inhale up. Exhale forward forward. Fingertips flat back. 
forward folding, soft bend those knees, right foot travels. We're going to ground that back foot. We come up into warrior one. One, two, three, four, five hands slowly travel down. Come to the ball of right foot, stepping back to plank. From plank, knees, chest, and chin or chatter on. Up dog, please. Smile up at the sky, work the face, work the hands, flip those toes. Down dog, where's your breath? Do you feel connected through feet and hands? What was your intention? How's your physical body, mental body, emotional body, energetic body? Right leg comes forward, grounding that back foot. We're going to come up into warrior one. Open the chest. Sinking in. Feel connected through feet. Three, four, five hands slowly float down. Come to the ball of left foot, stepping forward, fingertips flat back. Forward folding. Inhaling all the way up. Hands come down. Right ear, right shoulder. Left ear, left shoulder. Back to the center. And release. So now we're working on that last posture. The last posture is eagle. I'm going to show you from the side because there's some subtle things about it. So if we're going to balance on that right foot, heel ball toes, but instead of straight leg all weight, it's bent knee all weight because my left leg has to hook on this knee. So when it comes across, we don't want any spaces. So none of that. There should be no, I can't even do it that way, <laughs> but I see people do it that way. There should be no space like that. There should be no space. It should be completely all the way against the body. And that way you can push against it for stabilization. Another way to fire up the shoulders is when this is crossed, you're trying to push the elbows together. So this movement, like you're trying to break the movement, this kind of is what you're trying to do. At the same time, you're trying to push the palms together. So that's really going to cause the scapula to wing out, and you're going to feel that work here, and you want to try to keep no spaces in the thigh. Now, your balance may be off. Instead of coming out of the pose here like this, put your toes down. And that way you'll find some balance until you can pull it back up. Instead of losing the posture completely, because when this comes off, you're going to get messed up in the shoulders, right? So you can just dump it this way. All right, let's see what we've got. So I'm gonna do it from the side. Left foot is what we'll start with. Heel, ball, toes. Maybe you lift and lower, put the weight down. Knee is still bent. Crossing right leg over, maybe you hook, maybe you don't, that's okay. Right knee is on the top. Right arm is on the bottom. Cross. Lift those elbows. Now remember, there's a pushing out of the elbows. That pushing out of the elbows really activates those shoulders. Three, four, lift those elbows even higher. Are you breathing? Five, release it out. Walk it out. If you need to do any little circles or resting through the top of the foot, all good. And switch. Right foot, heel, ball, toes. Lift lower, knee is bent. Cross. Hook if you can, maybe. Left elbow is down, right arm is over. Hook, lifting those elbows. So you're trying to push those elbows apart or in towards each other. Like you're going to break free, palms together, and two, three. Maybe you can lift those elbows more. Four, are you breathing? Five, unwind with intention and shake. Out. So, everybody at home and here in the studio, you're going to come to the front and you're going to come into a squat. And you're going to hang out here in a squat 
why I give you um, a little bit of a workshop. So you guys are hanging out there as much as you can. If you feel like your feet or your knees need a break, take that. So for everybody here and at home, the hardest pose that we did today was half moon. And if you need a little practice at home on half moon, you can use a wall to do that. A really good way to help you flatten out. You'll take your block, arms will come out, turn the toes, you'll tee out into your triangle. Now my right leg is, is the one that I'm focusing on, so my right glute is touching the wall. You're gonna let that top hand come down. Look, right glute still touching wall. Bend knee and lift. This is gonna help you find that alignment. So you take the balance out of it so that you can get the stacking in the shoulder, the straightness in that bottom leg, the straightness in that back leg. My suggestion to you here though, is when you're gonna come out of this posture is to bring the top hand down, bend the knee, both feet touch. Use both legs to come up because one leg sometimes can give out on you. Just make sure you always do the other side. So my left glute is touching here. My heel isn't, but you can let it touch because that'll flatten you out even more. Using that wall, hand would come down, bend both knees, use both legs to come up, right? So that's something, yay, love workshop style. So that's something you do at home to practice to get that posture better. So from your squat. Oh, that feels really good, guys. You got to jump on me. From there, we're gonna extend those hands out, see if we can let the movies come down. Hold those knees. And from there, roll it on back. Nice little rock. Arms come out, drop those knees to the left, nice rotation. Feel that work through side body. One, two, three, four, five, bring those knees back to the center, over to the right. One, two, three, four, five, bring those knees back in. We're going to put the bottoms of the feet flat on the floor. Hands can come closer to side, windshield wiper those legs from side to side. Doesn't matter which direction you let them rock as long as you do. Now from here, we're gonna bring those arms in, bring those feet in, they're hip distance apart. Imagine you're holding a block between those knees and lift the hips. So we have contraction in the glutes. We have this lengthening that happens in front body. One, two, three, four, five. Slowly we start to lower down. Check in with the body again. Feel connected to the mat. And then slowly extend one leg and then the other. So at home or here in the studio, if you're using blankets or bolsters, you can set those things up now. Find your breath. Release the feet the ankles, the shin and calf, the knees, the thighs, the glutes and pelvic belly. Release lower back and navel, mid back and solar plexus, 
shoulder blades and heart. We lift those collarbones and lengthen the neck. We soften the jaw and the face. Find your breath here. What does it tell you? You're less active. It's become that automatic breath, life support breath, just easy breath. But allow it to elongate and fill all the way up. So as you use this imagery, we're allowing that inhale to come up back body, pausing at crown. Exhale, down the front body. Smoothing out the tissues, elongating fibers, pushing out inflammation, inhaling up back body and down front body, using your own cadence of breath. This might be where we find issues that are in our tissues. Maybe as you were practicing, you got angry about something or emotional about something. We let it go here. We inhale it up, scoop it up, exhale, let it go. Inhaling up back body, exhaling down front body. Checking in with that energetic body, mental body, it should be pretty much a test pattern, hopefully. <laughs> Emotional body, same thing. Physical body should feel pretty balanced. Spiritual body, some days we find it, some days we don't. We begin to move fingers and toes and just feel that subtlety of just those smaller digits that are so articulated. We begin to maybe bend one knee, putting the bottom of the foot on the mat, and then the other, maybe another windshield wiper here. Maybe your lower back is a little cranky, so you need those knees all the way in. A little rock from side to side to feel that work. And then over to right side. And rest. Slowly we push up to a comfortable seated position. If you're at home and you want to stay in that position, please do so. Lifting pelvic floor, pulling navel in. Allow right ear to drift towards right shoulder, just checking in with the body gently. Like if it was the first time waking up today. Get that second chance to start fresh. Left ear, left shoulder. Again, checking in with the muscles of body. And back to center. We allow the hands to come to heart. Reminding ourselves of all the amazing things we have in our life to be thankful for. And some days it's hard. I would be just remiss to think that every day that that's easy, because it's not. Some days we wake up and it's just crap. So we focus on the crap. I am so overwhelmed. I have this to do and that to do and this to do and this, blah, 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 blah. But I woke up. I have the ability to do them, or the ability to say no. Thirty dishes mean I had food to eat. Thirty clothes means I had clothes to wear. Find the gratitude. We send out love and kindness and compassion, maybe forgiveness to those who need it, and some days it's ourselves, and that's okay. We're going to end the practice with an om if you're comfortable, and if not, just enjoy mine. Inhaling.
bowing forward in respect. Namaste. Peace be with you. Go safely. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yay, yoga! That was so much fun! Yay, guys! Thanks, I appreciate it. Let me see what we've got here. Ah, oh, they're saying yay, yoga. That makes me happy. Brandy, I'm glad those balances got better for you, and I'm glad you were here. Oh, we got some namastes, namastes. They're going to say namaste right here at home. So thank you at home for joining me today. Thank you in the studio for joining me today. Big hugs.